Hey guys, we want to welcome you uh, today once again to Coffee with Clients. It is Friday and we are super excited to welcome you today. Uh, myself and the Professor Wayne Pendle is uh, our co-host today and we are so excited to be doing this. Uh, we love Coffee with Clients so much, but I've just been so excited about getting to do it with Wayne today. So that's going to be a blast. And really and truly, the element and the subject that we get to talk about today is one that uh, involves every one of us on here, no matter if you're brand new to the program or if you've been on the program a long time. We want to share with you some keys today, some principles from Dr. A teaching in his Habits of Health system and uh, in the life book, we want to give to you some very practical tools that you can implement in your everyday life. And uh, it really makes a great difference. So we're going to have a great time. So uh, welcome to each of you as others are coming into the room. And uh, we welcome you, uh, Wayne Pendle. Do you want to say hello before I just navigate right into this? Yeah, brother. Listen, uh, I am excited. I've been excited to partner with you, uh, my brother. And it is, I love coffee with clients. I love these moments we can gather, we can encourage, but also we can get this brain healthy, Rick, right? I mean, I realized oh. years ago, I, I had a stomach issue, but I had a brain issue. And once I started thinking about how simple it was to apply what sometimes nutrition, exercise, mindset, habits, I just love that Dr. A has broken this down uh, for us all to really be able to apply, not just on our best day, but I love what he says, Rick. These are micro habits we do. We can do on our worst days, right? So I, I, I love this. Well, it's, it's going to be a great time. So thank all of you for jumping in. We're ready to go with that. And I, I, one of the things that Wayne and I talked about that might be good is if we share a little bit about our journey. I've never done that on coffee with clients. So I want to take a minute and I want to just give you a little bit of my own perspective of my journey as a client. I started uh, Optavia uh, at the beginning of 2019. And uh, it was really because in my life, I felt like that I had received a very encouraging word uh, that I really felt like that the Lord uh, ministered to me. And I know that not everybody may be uh, a, a person of faith, uh, as I am, or whatever that expression is. But I felt like that it was time for the renewing of the mind and the restoring of the body. And so I began to move into that in 2019. And uh, when I started my journey, uh, I was a little over 350 pounds. And uh, you can see there just a couple of before and afters. I have no idea. I look kind of like Captain Kangaroo uh, in that one picture. Wayne, Wayne, don't start. It's too early. It's too early to be starting that. You, you cannot be ducking your head on the table already. But but even when I see that picture, I look, dog, man, I look like Captain Kangaroo or something. And what did he have, a, a pet squirrel or something? I don't know. No pet squirrel here. This was the real deal. And then in the other picture, you can see just kind of that side profile, you know, which was incredible. Those are a pair of jeans you know, that I wore once upon a time, incredibly and remarkably. And so I began the journey and uh, my coach, who happens to be John Michael Kilpatrick, give him a shout out, really began to help me navigate the early stages of the program. I've now lost uh, uh, over 115 pounds and uh, I was on nine medications when I started. Uh, thank you, see Emily. Emily knows already, right? Look, it's always easier to stop and celebrate others than it is to celebrate ourselves, right? So it is 115 pounds. So I'm going to do the ridiculous. And I'm going to ask y'all, give old Ricky right here a shout out. <laughs> okay. Hey, Rick, I just want to let you know how proud I am of you, buddy. Wait a minute. Wait, this is what Rick would do. Hold on a minute. Say that number again. Right. 115 pounds, Man, Wayne. Man, you're what we call a full gospel preacher in every sense of the word, brother. Oh. Come on. So, <laughs> hey, I used to tell people this is not a this is not a belt I'm wearing. It's a fence around a chicken graveyard. But anyway, let's go on. So here's 
So I, I appreciate the celebration. It really does matter for all of us. But, you know, I was able to come off eight of my nine medications, including all meds for uh, hypertension and, and all of that. But look, here's the deal. Optavia makes no claims medically about our medicines. But what we do know is that in this amazing transformational effort, then many wonderful things happen when we begin to bring our bodies into a place of an optimal weight and nutritional health. And so if we give our bodies an opportunity to respond, guess what? Your body's going to respond. And so we are so thankful uh, for uh, this journey. It has been a remarkable time. And look, I'll be honest with you. I'm still not where I want to be yet. We all at times hit walls and you, you, you go to change as much weight as I am uh, and I have. Uh, we really are committed to this process. And so when we get to see you guys at convention, we hope that everybody's really focused in and gathering there as a family, but we completely love uh, the journey as a client first. So Wayne, take a minute and, um, or, or maybe do you want to go ahead and do that? And then I'll come back and review the six. Yeah. I'm, let me share my story and I'll get us kickstarted into our element today. And then Rick, you can come and, and start breaking those down. But First of all, Rick, I, I love this community. I, I honor Pat and Karen. I'm glad they said yes. I'm glad John Michael said yes to shout out to my coach. I'm glad my wife, Courtney, said yes. Come uh, on. Because she's the one that said yes. And then, Rick, I got the elbow and the ribs. Come on, yeah. some of y'all. About a month later, and she's like, uh, hey, big boy, <laughs> you want to join me? So let me share with you the impact that she had. I just want to take a couple minutes and share our client story. And so I'm going to put this on the screen. Uh, you all can see actually Courtney on the left side. Uh, she came on program. She had a health scare. She spent her birthday in the ER. It was definitely wow. a wake up call for us to do something. Thank goodness. We saw John Michael being active and sharing. So I just want to encourage all of you right now, live your journey out loud. You never know who desperation is going to need the solution you have. Do not keep in the private diet closet. That doesn't work. It had not worked. So when he stepped into the light, it gave us hope sitting in the ER. We knew that our first phone call to get healthy was him. She came on program, lost 40 pounds. I came on pro program, lost 40 pounds. My daughter, who you see in the upper right-hand corner, she's right now still on her journey. She's lost almost 120 pounds. Wow. Come on, right? Wow. My mother, my 84-year-old mother down there, 50 pounds after my what? dad passed away. She decided she was going to take care of her health after taking care of him. I'm letting you all know right now, the ripple effect that you will have into the lives of others is tremendous. It's I say this out of kindness to all of you. It ain't about you only. It's about wow. the lives you can impact and going forward. And so I wanted to share it just as Rick said, we're still contending for our health. We're still on our journey, but I am so grateful that Dr. A made it super simple for hard-headed guys like me because I knew I needed to eat better. I knew I needed to go to the gym. I knew I needed to do these things, but I just did not have the ability or the time or the effort to do. But my goodness, almost seven years later, Courtney and I are still on program and our healthiest we've ever been in our lives, thankful for this. And this community and leaning into our coaching community is still a big part of that. Well, I wanted to share as we get started today about this element, and it is super neat no pun intended. Now, some of you are like, man, we're going to the deep end of the, uh, of, of the pool here when it comes to health. But one of the things I love about Dr. A is that he breaks this down. But we're going to talk about this concept called NEAT. It stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Oh, my goodness. Right? So I'm going to make that super simple. But how many of you know, and just put into the chat, what would you say would be some benefits of exercise? If I had to ask, I think, I think we probably know these, but I'm just curious in the chat what some of you would say, Wayne, if I, I could really dial in my exercise, these would be, I know, some medically proven benefits of exercise. Yeah, Sarah, we'd say better sleep. Better sleep. It's certainly there. I love that. Anything else that we feel like is there? There, there definitely are some that mental clarity, Elsa, exactly right. Mental health, right? Heart health, Tammy, you're exactly right, right? Exercise has been proven to prevent heart disease, strokes, diabetes, other chronic diseases, overall mood, lower blood pressure, lower stress, 
reduce muscle bone and joint, increase muscle bone and joints, right? Improve our metabolism. All of these things, we, how many of us know that, right? We know exercise. Dr. A's plan is all about movement, all about simplicity. And that's what I love about this. And here's what's super cool about what we're about to break down, that Rick and I are about to break down. It's making sometimes this, man, this kind of arduous, impossible, do I have to go to the gym, exercise? It's going to be so simple. We're going to break down. You're already doing some of these things. It's about finding in the little nooks and crannies of your routine that lend themselves to more intentional movement. And what I love about this, Rick, is just like Dr. A's fuelings have made the nutritional part of our lives simple, this neat concept has made the exercise part of our lives super doable. So our goal is we're going to make it neater today. Come on, right? We're going to do that. And it's designed to be easy. It's designed to be effective and you're already doing it. And so this is actually going to set the stage for what you're going to do moving forward. Now, the next uh, element starts to talk about eat. It's when we are intentional exercise, but right now I want to encourage you. In fact, I put this on our client support page, Rick. I said, Hey, how would you like to burn an extra two or 300 calories a day just by washing dishes? Right. right. And I, everyone's like, well, what? I said, come to coffee with clients. So Rick, let's take this concept of non-exercise activity thermogenesis and let's break it down because there really are six key areas. What's cool about it, Rick, is we're already doing these, but That's being intentional true. about doing them could be super cool. So go for it, brother. Yeah, absolutely. And, and really, one of the things he was talking about in the Habits of Health system is that the NEAT system is really kind of like a ramp that we mm. begin to build up. So many times when we start out on the program, we, we kind of think about exercise or movement or activity. We either think in one or two categories, either I'm going to the gym or, and doing exercise or I'm not. And one of the brilliant things about the NEAT program is it gives us the understanding that if we make little incremental sure. changes every day to things that we're already doing, it can really serve as a ramping up, if you will, to even greater activity. So let's look at those six things there, Wayne. Yeah. The first one is stance. So we really want to look at that. And we're, we're going to be getting into that a little bit more in just a moment. But stance is about posture. There, there they are. Stance uh, is really, and Wayne and I are going to go through each one of these. But there are six S's of success in this NEAT program. And that is stance, standing, strolling, stairs, samba. Uh-oh. Come on. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm, I don't. Okay, and then the last one is switch. So let's go ahead, Wayne, just jump in, because I'll be honest, I can't wait to get to Samba. But the number one uh, step in this neat system that Dr. A has so brilliantly put together for us to ramp up our action is stance or posture. You know, at work, it really matters if we set our, our when we set up straight. One of the things that Dr. A talks about is how that when our posture is right, we can't see what's happening at the smallest in incrementally cellular level of our muscles that are always in motion when we are just being intentional about our posture. <clears throat> when we set up straight, certainly, as we'll see in the second one here in a moment, when we go from a sitting position to a standing one, but when we get up and move around, even one of the things that Dr. A talks about is that you could even uh, work your way up to a place where you're actually using a balance ball uh, for your desk chair in the office. At home, there are lots of things that we do every day that really can help us if we are intentional, like Wayne said, by doing little bitty things, we can burn an extra two to 300 calories a day. You know, focus on sitting up, uh, sitting up straight, making sure our posture is good while we're watching TV or even riding in a car. You may say, well, I'd rather just slump down in the couch. <coughs> and lay back on the pillows, we all would at times on that. But when we're very intentional, we sit up straight. The other thing Dr. A talks about in this uh, element here 
is that, you know, you can do uh, core exercises. You can do, you know, stomach muscle, uh, you know, uh, exercise, even when you're sitting upright or riding in a car. Uh, get up and move anytime you can. Really, the micro habit challenge is to add one or two additional minutes of focus on those core positions every day. So when we're sitting up, sit up straight, all of that. And then the target goal is 30 minutes of focus on core position every single day. And then additional target would be the balance ball chair uh, when you reach a place where you could do that. But, but, but we do this every day. We sit at the table and eat. <clears throat> we ride a car, we sit at the desk. And so we can literally begin to be very intentional and as we are, begin to burn calories and build muscle even while we're uh, in a stance or in a, a, a focused on our posture. So Wayne, take us to uh, standing, I believe is that. I love it. And you know, it's so true, Rick, as you were talking about that, I'm like, it, it, it takes the intimidation out of exercise. You know, and it's particularly helpful for people that aren't going to go to the gym all the time, but we can do it. But let's talk about standing at work. I know for me, especially in kind of in this COVID world we've been in, there's a lot of sitting that's taking place. There's a lot of Zoom. Some of you are sitting right now. Listen, but listen, as much as we can, get out of your chair. Stand or walk around when you're talking on the phone. Man, go outside and pace. Use a standing desk. This desk right here moves up and many times I'll stand. But at home, Look at those suggestions there, washing dishes, ironing clothes, watching TV, reading the paper, prepping, those things, just be more intentional about standing. So here's the micro habit, right? Those things we can do even on our worst day. Don't try to say, well, I'm going to run a marathon or I'm going to stand 24 hours. No, just an additional 10 minutes. That's it. Now, the goal would be to stand an additional two hours per day, but I wanted to read you quick the study that Dr. A put in his Habits of Health book, so I'm going to read it to get it right, Rick, because it's all about the power of standing. Uh, Dr. A put in there, a team of researchers, researchers at the Mayo Clinic, led by Dr. James Levine, spent 10 days studying groups of mildly obese and lean volunteers that were all self-proclaimed couch potatoes. Lord, that was me in the past. They discovered that the obese group, this, listen to this, this is amazing. The obese group stayed seated for about two and a half hours longer per day than the lean group, burning an average of 350 fewer calories per day wow. just because they were seated more. So I know yesterday I was in an all day training in a Zoom and I had to, every, every 90 minutes for 30 minutes, we had breaks that I built into that. And I told him, step away from your computer, get up, walk around, do something. Because those little things will add up. And how many of you would like to burn some extra calories? Just not by going to the gym or CrossFit or Peloton. Those are great. Those are going to come later. But right now, super simple. So I love that, that standing can make a big difference. Rick, how about this next one called yeah. strolling? Yeah, well, well, let's look at this. And the other thing is, too, as we do that, just the walking around, getting up and moving. I, I know I, there have been times, Wayne, when I've set my alarm so that if I'm working or something yep. at my desk, I've just set a little timer. And so that every hour, every hour and a half, I'm reminded, get up, take a little walk. And so Rick, let me just say about that, too. Here, here's how you can have it stack. How about walk around while you're eating a fueling? I mean, if we're going to eat a fueling, if we're going to eat every two and a half, three hours, when you set a timer for your fueling, drink that shake, eat that bar, get those crunchers, man, walk around your backyard with your brownie. And those are ways that we can be intentional about both getting proper nutrition and proper exercise all in one. So that's what we do. You know, the other thing that Dr. A mentioned in the book as well is that these micro habits right here are habits that you could do well into your senior years. And so you don't want to just say, well, it's all the gym or nothing when we can take a stroller walk. You know, when we're working, even at home, like you mentioned, walk around the room, even while you're on the phone. We live in a cul-de-sac. So many times when I get on a phone, I'll put my ear pods in and I'll go out, walk around the cul-de-sac, walk up and down the street or whatever. So just get a little movement in walk to work or we're shopping or something, park our car a little farther away. Hmm. Choose often to ch take the steps. That's something uh, that I try to get in the habit of doing. Uh, have walking meetings. I've not done that, but I like the idea. 
choose the farthest bathroom or water cooler and make your way there. Any way that you can, just begin to do that. Now, I do have a little walking desk here at in my office, and there are times I'll put my computer up on that and just gives me the flexibility to move around about the house, even while I'm standing, walk your dog, uh, you know, walk on the beach. Well, amen. We love to do that right here in Pensacola for sure. And, uh, but get off the couch, take a little stroll, take a walk, just get some movement in and don't think about it in the terms of, well, I've got to go walk so I can get this exercise in. Learn to enjoy the stroll. Learn to enjoy the activity of walking uh, through that. So the micro habit is add 100 additional steps per week. Guys, that really is minimal. We all, most all of us should be able to do that. But then the target goal is to get 10,000 steps a week. And so uh, one of the things Dr. A said in the book, by the time people reach 60 years of age, uh, generally they're walking about 4,800 steps a day. And so we want to incrementally increase that by learning these micro habits and applying them to our lives. Okay, Wayne, let's go. I love that. Hey, and a reminder too, uh, Rick, I know we'll talk about this at the end, but since you mentioned the steps, the Optavia app, how many of you put a one in the chat if you have downloaded and use the Optavia app? Would love to know if you're, man, it, it is I know, Rick, we talked about this the other day. It's powerful. I know we share it with our clients. We use it. But on the homepage of that app, it will track three things for you. It'll track your fuelings. So you just literally click a button and it's, it, okay, you got three left. You got two left. It'll track your water. So if you're setting a benchmark of 120 ounces a, a day or whatever, it'll give a percentage. It kind of neatly fills up a water bottle. And then it also tracks your steps. So if you have a goal to say, I want to do a hundred additional steps per week or a thousand or 10,000 per day, you can set that in there. And it's just a great benchmark to reward that because sometimes we're not as intentional as we need to be, but seeing that progress is super cool. So I love that. Yeah. Amen. Walking is a big, Hey, and Dr. A said in his book too, celebrate walking to the mailbox and back. Don't feel like it's got to be marathon prep because it's the little things. And on your, on your days where you're feeling more motivation, Go to the mailbox and back. Just say, man, next time there's going to be a check in there. Next time there's going to be a check in there. Next, right? Just keep walking back and forth till you get what you need, right? So, hey, how about the stairs? There's another S we want to talk about. Group, skip the elevator. I think that's the number one tip there. You know, if I'm in a hotel, if I'm in a place, I always ask, where's the stairs at? Right? Because there's just something rewarding about being able to do that, right? You, I like this one. Use the bathroom on a different floor. That'll make you go up and down the stairs quickly, right? So, right, but whatever it takes to do it, but just take a stair break. Walk up and down the stairs at your home. In fact, Rick, you were talking about putting some cool things along the wall or rewards and just yeah. to kind of say, hey, you're making progress. And Courtney's got a great quote that's going up the top of our stairs about awakening others that I read and, and just celebrating those things. So here's the micro habit that we all can commit just once a day. And of course, stairs could also be, if you don't have stairs, it could be just, you know, walking vertically or horizontally. It doesn't have to be, but one additional flight of stairs per week. Notice it doesn't say per day. I Come mean, on. group, that's doable. And that's what right. I love about Dr. A. Make sure it's such an easy habit that it's almost a ridiculous goal, right? And then on days where you feel more motivated, we'll take a flight of stairs per day or several times a week. But look what it says. 10 flights of stairs per day is the ultimate target goal. But wow. nonetheless, if we're just intentional about always not just, I mean, how many times do we sit there for four minutes and wait for the elevator? And then we, and then by the way, we cram in there with a bunch of sick people. Like we're all packed in there. I'm like, Lord, take the stairs. Ain't nobody else on them. <laughs> so <laughs> it'll save you. Rick, talk about, oh, mercy. Oh, whoa, 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 Wait, wait. Time out, time out, time out right uh -oh. there. Here, Hey, before we go to number five, okay, I'm ready. I, I got to say this: what you said about the stairs, I absolutely love. And one of the things Dr. A said in the book is paint your staircase at home if you have a multi-level home. Paint your staircase or put things on the staircase yeah. that make you want to walk up that. I, I just love that that idea. Okay, so let me tell you something. The only way, Rick, my fat beagle will get up the stairs at night is when there's a treat at the top. So if you got to put your fueling at the top of the stairs, 
Come right. on, somebody, take the stairs to get there. Rick, I, I kind of was getting a little amnesia over this next one. I don't know if I remember. What is this next one all about? Well, look here, Wayne. So here's what we need to do. Everybody come off of your, uh, turn your video on. Come on, it's all good. Everybody turn your video on. Everybody, we're going to get our hands moving. Like okay, this. are we ready? Are we ready? Rick, remind me what we're doing. Five. It's er Everybody's got to be moving for number five. Lord Todd's driving and he's doing it. Come on, who, buddy. Who can samba? I don't even know. Keep going, Rick. Come on, brother. Run burn some calories. I want to see all these people doing the samba, Wayne. I was like, oh, man, come on, do the samba. So, Love it. So talk to us about it, brother. <laughs> So Samba, look, have fun in the journey. Do a little happy dance. Do a little fun dance. Get a little movement and a little motion in your body at work. Turn on your music at lunch. Go outside. Get into a little bit of motion. Don't do anything ridiculous to get fired or something. But I'm just saying, you know, go, <laughs> go out there and have a little bit of movement at home. Use music to augment everything you do on your own from gardening to cleaning. And, you know, with the uh, modern ear pods and all that, it's easy to put good music or something, whatever you choose in your in your ears and then just really get to moving in that. Or you can always take a dance class. Come on. Wayne, have y'all ever taken a dance class? I, that's that's a that's next week's coffee with clients. I'm not going to reveal anything about that right now. Oh. <laughs> okay all right we're i gotta go say wait a minute now that you ask okay full disclosure my first date together okay was we went country line dancing uh -oh. and courtney uh -oh. fell in love with me because they started doing a little you know little garth brooks slow dancing and i pulled her in and it uh -oh. was over i'm just letting you know right now so uh oh you, but so you pull dancing has many benefits okay so you mm. pulled her right into something she could never pull out of. All right, so let's just go. <laughs> so, but the point is, guys, look, this journey is a journey of life. It's a journey of celebration, you know, and no matter where you are on your journey, you are worthy today to celebrate who you are, celebrate your journey. You may not be exactly where you want to be yet, but celebrate that you have begun this journey. You've begun a journey to take back your health, take back your future, and really move forward in the to be the best you that you can be. And so one of the great things to do is just really get into movement. You know, Jennifer has a little sign in our bathroom that says dance like nobody's watching. And so I, 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 I yeah, so, okay. And so anyway, <laughs> The micro habit is to add 10 additional minutes of music per day. And Wayne, everybody can do that. Come Work on, everybody's listening to music or something. An hour or more of dancing a week. What a wonderful way to get your body into motion. And then the target goal is 90 minutes of music per day and one hour of dance per week. Mm. Now, I don't know about you all, but that just sounds like fun to really try to make that micro habit a reality in our lives. And look, it's not about getting stressed over going to the gym or lifting weights or how to use the machines when we get there. You know, this is about implementing motion every day in our lives that we're already doing in one measure or another. Okay, Wayne, switch us out. Yeah, this last one's pretty interesting. One that I hadn't really thought of, Rick, and that is this idea of switch. In other words, switch an automated task to a more manual task. So at work, you know, be very intentional about taking, do you know, chewing gum, tapping your, your foot, all of those are actually things Dr. A defines as neat, but at home. Lord, if I could do this, Courtney would be happy. Put away appliances. Start doing kitchen and other indoor chores by hand, right? Taking out the garbage, raking leaves. We don't have snow where we live, but washing the car. I mean, so many things we've automated. 
right? We take our car here. We do that. We didn't, you know, those things are convenient. I'm not saying we can't have time savers, but just be intentional about doing things. And so what can we do? Substitute one to two manual tasks per day. You know, uh, I, you know, I, I remember growing up, my, I was the remote control for the TV. My dad'd be like, go change the channel. So I mean, maybe we need to get back to putting the remote up by the television so right. we can do it. But if we will be intentional, I bet there's some things that we could do so that are a little bit more intentional about adding that switch to there. And then the target goal is that we've got 10 substituted manual tasks per day. Now we work up to that. Right. But right now, I bet we could all think of some things. And so I just love the fact that these are all alliterated. They all begin with the letter S. And the good news is, Rick, we are most likely already doing these things. It's not necessarily a change. It's just that we're going to be more intentional about celebrating those and making it easy to do that. And so if we all kind of wrap this up, one of the things that Dr. A talks about is this idea of how we incorporate into this wheel, our 24 hours a day, where you can see there's a lot devoted to rest, which that's another great element he talks about, healthy sleep. But during that, between wake up and bedtime, look for those little opportunities. I bet you'll find there are multiple opportunities per day to be neat right? To have those non-exercise activities because it does keep us into that gentle fat burn. It works. You put the fuelings and the science behind it, you put water in your body and you're intentional about doing just a couple extra steps. You are a metabolic powerhouse at that point. But Rick, talk to us about how we might be able to track this and then we'll kind of yeah. land this plane and take some Q&A. But there's a pretty cool tool that for those of you that need it, they could use this, Rick. Yeah, absolutely. And, and let me go back just for a minute, because D Dr. A says that we could burn 60 extra calories a day just by doing items one and two, the posture or the stance mm. and the standing. One of the illustrations he gave there for the switching is instead of using an electric pencil sharpener, Get an old school hand crank pencil. Oh, sharpener. man, the thing you mount on your desk and you kind of. Or the suction cup, Wayne. The you suction the, cup one. Right? And then you just hand crank your, you know, to sharpen the pencil. And so Love I wanted it. to mention that because it's the smallest things that we do already. So let's go ahead and look at that. Optivi has provided a great little uh, chart where you can actually track uh, your need. You can see that at health, uh, habitsofhealth.com. Look, it's, it's amazing. There are all kinds of sheets there where you can literally track that. And I guarantee you, the more we are intentional about stewarding the little things well, the big things begin to take care of themselves right. much more easily when we learn to steward the little things well. Our day or our week or our month goes better because we schedule, we put those time slots in. Well, our overall health journey can be better when we begin to steward those little actions, those little activities along the way. Now, I don't have, uh, I, I believe that there are some of you on here that would love to jump off maybe with a question or a comment. So Wayne and I want to take a minute and give you an opportunity to raise your hand. And then we're going to just begin to call on some different ones. Maybe you would like to... Uh, uh, share with us a little bit about maybe your idea. Maybe you have something here that you could interject as far as a neat, um, you know, activity that maybe you do or you could think of doing. Or maybe somebody would like to give an update on their program or a shout out to uh, their coach or something like that. So anybody want to uh, come offline and brave enough to jump in this ring with Wayne mm. and me. Anybody like that? And, and Wayne, while we're waiting there a second, let me just say, man, I, I love doing this uh, with you. It's so much fun. And, well, it uh, is fun. And I, I, first of all, I, when I dive back in, I've been to the life book several years ago, but I kind of dove back in and Every time I read through it, I, I, I just want to tell Dr. A, thank you again, because I discover something new. And I'm at a new place right now of where I was a year ago, 
So there's yeah. a different application for this. So I, I just want to encourage you again. And we're all on this journey. Rick and I have made the decision to pay this forward as coaches, but we're we're still clients at our core. We're still contending for our health. But just don't be shy about discovering the amazing tools that are out there. I think sometimes clients can, we can, and I'm guilty of this too, Rick, can just focus on the, the diet only, the fuelings yeah. only. Right. And sometimes we are good and sometimes we get discouraged, but you know what? I love that Dr. Ray says every two and a half, three to three hours, we get a redo. So don't beat yourself up on exercise. Just right now, after this zoom, in fact, everybody sit up straight. You've just checked off the neat box, right? There it is, right? Look when you get off, Look before you get on another call, just go take a walk. Hey, one of the benefits of drinking water, let me get real personal is you're going to have to get up and go to the bathroom. There's your neat points right there, right? So there are ways to be able to design already in our day. Brother, I love being able to partner with you. Thank you all for being a part of this. I'm going to let you add that exclamation at the end and close things out, man. Go ahead and say goodbye to our group. Hey, we're closing things out. Uh, goodbye and celebrate somebody in your life today, your coach, a client, whoever it is. And uh, thanks for joining us today on Coffee with Clients.